prisoners of war were no longer officially the enemy, so the at atmosphere of hostility was changed. And Corporal Crosby shared how he would play ball and even have some of the uh, Japanese soldiers clean his record. Over the years, Corporal Crosby had been thanked many times for wearing his cherished World War II 13th Air Force veterans cap. While he politely received their respectful comments, he often expressed his own gratitude for being in the military, especially the GI Bill. Well, the GI Bill had provided him a great opportunity for him and millions of other veterans to attend college and build the solid middle class of the greatest generation. In this life, the honor to flag and now the flag of the honor.
to encourage you to consider a psalm. Psalm 23 perhaps may help comfort you today, or maybe in the days to come, maybe during birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a beautiful image, a beautiful illustration that God has given us. That when we're lonely, when we're when we're mourning, when we're frightened, when we're weary, that we can go to the Lord, and He will restore our soul. Another beautiful verse that I like is at the very end: "I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." David was probably talking about the holy temple, but it's also a reminder. Of eternal life going to God. Mr. Crosby was a hard working man. He made the most of the opportunities that he had. He went from being a dropout in high school to earning a PhD in Princeton. 
Besides serving in the army, which was a very courageous and heroic thing that he did, he served our nation by being in the National Security Agency during the Cold War. He did a job that was very monumental in helping breaking the East German codes. He was a professor at seven universities, universities which was popular enough to be nominated five times for an outstanding teacher. After retiring from teaching, he was a frequent lecturer at the Smithsonian and nearby embassies in the Washington, D.C. area. It was a joy for him to share with audiences, to share his enthusiasm for literature, for his history, for poetry, for mythology, and music. He received the Wagner Award from the Wagner Society of Washington, D.C. Donald was a serious New York Yankees fan. He had a zest, a zeal, enthusiasm for life. He loved to recite poetry or scenes from the drama. He liked to wear costumes or take funny photos. I'm sure there must have been some funny photos. <laughs> he learned to scuba dive. He was eager to zip line, to go parasailing in the Alps or go in a helicopter over a smoking volcano. He was a fun person to keep up with, and I'm sure you had lots of fun too, man. <laughs> he was immensely proud of his son, Walter, with whom he had a constant exchange of baseball news, frequently spoke about finances and world affairs, traveling, and the details of modern life. He loved the treasure of his daughter, Katriona? Katriona. I understand that he used to be like your playmate. You just spent time yeah. playing with you, spending time with you, and what a beautiful quality that is. Um, it's a great pleasure in seeing you to be a His love for his life was Bonnie Becker, where it sounds like they had a they met in a German class, in a German class, um, but it, was, it wasn't until years later that they, uh, they came together and uh, then the romance started. He used to call her Bon Bon. What a sweet, enduring name for her spouse. And they, they were in love. Uh, their whole life. Donald was passionate about classical musical music. He developed appreciation uh, into an art form itself. And he wasn't necessarily a religious man, um, but I guess the best way to say that he saw, he saw God's glory and God's handiwork is in music, and gifting people with music, whether that's box, uh, B minor, a mass, or Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Um, it was a uh, really a religious experience for him. Uh, a poster that hung over his desk uh, probably communicates his personal philosophy. Uh, it says, Bach gave us God's word, Mozart gave us God's laughter, Beethoven gave us God's fire, God gave us music that we can pray without words. Column 11 and niche 3. Column 11, niche 
Somebody should send me an email because at the moment. Okay, well, let's wait for Jeannie and we'll figure it out. She's coming back to take a picture. Oh, gee, I thought we drank that. We did. They just put a new one there. That's just cranberry. Oh, it's the miracle. It's the miracle of the Donald Manhattan. Yeah. We thought there was. There you go. That's just really a just a crop. Yeah. We okay, thought there was bourbon. Oh, there we go. It's a prop. There we yeah. are. Okay. It's the Manhattan so, prop. We're copying okay, his head. Hold on. We're, we're kind of blocking the way. Yeah, we'll back up harder. Don't move, John. Don't move. Oh, that looks good. We're good. I'm doing video, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One picture for Mr. Hussein. He wants a picture of this. One more, because the flash keeps getting it in the wrong angle. Okay. 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 Um, you could choose the best from those. All right. Thank you guys. Oh, that's beautiful. Honey, there's a lot of opportunity with